How do? It's been a while. Here's uh, the fan's favourite, Stephen. Chewing a bone on his cool mat. Surrounded by his teddy bears. And he has many, believe me. So, 20 minutes uh, after this, one of my first interviews with Sean. It's very raw. Uh, I'm meeting up with him this Saturday and Sunday night. I will be posting uh, an update on his life. Uh, I'm super chuffed he got in touch. Uh, we're going to go and have a, a proper, decent catch-up. So the 20 minutes, it's three clips put together. Uh, Life-changing event in his childhood. Briefly, how he became addicted to painkillers. And his, his start or his venture into criminality. He says very hardcore, very rough. Um, yeah. We'll see how he's doing. Anyway, guys. Wishing you all the very best. Uh, thanks to everyone who supported me on Patreon. Thanks to everyone who's bought me a brew, bought me a coffee. Uh, thanks for all the comments, all the contribution. Everyone I've interviewed past... And the people I'm going to be interviewing in the present. Cheers, guys. I'll see there. Hello. This is Sean. Um, it's going to be a rough ride, this, guys. It's not going to be rushed. Um, and we're going to go at Sean's pace. How are you doing, mate? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. He's from Lancashire. Obviously, we're bridging that gap. <laughs> um... No, seriously, I'm going to let Sean tell you why he's here and then he can start wherever he wants. Brilliant. So, nice meeting you, mate. Yeah, and you as well. I appreciate I appreciate your time. Um, so, yeah, so I'm coming on my third year of doing an IPP centre and it's kind of weird word to look at, isn't it? Just um, talk to so me. It's, you, you just feel comfy, mate. So it's like my third year of coming on from an IPP centre and... Um, I got it for attempted murder and I got a 10 year wreck. Um, so the story behind that, it wasn't necessarily I got the IPP for the offence, even though that was part of it. Yeah. The main reason I got the IPP was um, there was a safety issue to, to someone in the public. And I'd done, I'd done three prison sentences and the first two previous. Were, previous to, to getting the IPP and they were through going after one person attempting to kidnap him uh, torture him and and I weren't going to stop to be fair guys on Sean you know um, <sighs> very young this weren't they your first prison sentences mm. um I can't get my head around it. Just, just go, mate. Just, you do your thing. No it is. So, so yeah. So it was about this one person, and I was never going to stop. Police knew it. Probation knew it. Everyone knew it, and I never hid the fact. Um, so, why were I going after this person, and why did my life change? So I was twelve years old, and I'm having a kick about with my brother. There's a couple of others, and another lad came and joined in. Never met him before. Um, so we started getting friendly. He was a little bit older than me. Um, and we just started becoming friends. To After a few weeks, then he'd said, oh, come round to my house. Um, you know, we can all chill in there. My dad's sound, and this is where we all go chill. He had older brothers, and he said, that's where we all go. So I used to go around. Um, and I'd smoke and drink. Weed. 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 Not really. I tried my my first joint then, um, but it wasn't a big thing for me because it used to make Just me sick. Yeah, cool cheers. It used to make me feel a bit sick. So, but it was the drinking and just that adult thing of a feeling like an adult that you're smoking and you're around these older boys and so. This one night, I was supposed to meet him now. At the bottom of my street, there was a shop. So at the bottom of my street, there was a road that went across. Um, so I really cut through, cut across our street. So I was supposed to meet him at the shop and then walk up a few doors up where he lived. 
So I'm at the shop, he hasn't turned out, I've waited 10, 15 minutes, he's not. So I've gone to his house. So I've knocked on the door. And his dad came to the door and I said, oh, he's so-and-so here. Um, I want to call my friend's dad, and the knobhead, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just so I don't have his yeah. name. No. So the knobhead answered the door and I said, oh, he's so -and -so. I said, is he in? No, no, he's out. I said, oh, I was supposed to meet him. Do you know when he's coming back? No, I have no idea. Come in now, you know, you can come and wait. Done it so many times with the Lords was in there. So do? at that age, you don't have suspicions and things, you? you know, you're, you're not corrupt. Your brain's not corrupted to danger and stuff. So I go in and I'm smoking fags and he was giving me these little bottle, green bottles of lager. So I'd only had a couple and then he's went and got another one come back. And they were open the capper off. So I'm drinking it. And let's say we're talking and all that. Then next thing I know, I'm coming too. Like, I open my eyes and it's like... The effect is when you've been knocked out. I don't know if you've ever been knocked out playing rugby or... <laughs> you come to and it's like fuzzy nursing. Your brain feels like... It's weird. It's a weird feeling. And I'm looking around the room and I thought... I'm in a bed. So I moved the covers and I had no clothes on from like waist down. And I, f I felt I was in some pain, you know. So I knew something had happened. But again, I wasn't that at that age where I knew about sex, so I didn't know anything about that sort of thing. I was just a young lad who loved playing football. So I got dressed. I snuck halfway down the stairs. Now, as you come down the stairs, you come into the living room. So I've come halfway down, I've looked, and he's not there. So I don't know if he was in the bathroom or he was in the kitchen. He wasn't in the living room, so I flew out the house. And I just went and sat down on a wall. Were you unsteady? <laughs> Fucking unsteady. I was... It's. I can't explain the feeling. It's a weird feeling. It was like I was... It's like I'd smoked loads of weed and, like... I wasn't myself and I had this pain and I'm trying to make sense of what's happened. And I went home and I didn't say anything. And after a few weeks, couple of months, um, my behavior started getting noticed where, do um, I was brought up with my dad and my brother and there was fear of my dad. You know, if I got detention, I were in, I were in trouble. Um, it was strict. You know, we had to make sure the dishes were washed before he come home, before we went out and played. Because he were at work when we come home, he didn't come home till about seven. So we'd have to make sure the house, we'd done our chores. It was a strict house, but very, very loving. Very loving. Um, in certain ways. Of like, we got whatever we wanted. He cared about you. Yeah, but it didn't show me that sort of other kind of love, that, you know, that softy, like, oh, go. I was the oldest, so for me it was like, stop crying, I'll give you something to cry for. Do you know what I mean? Men don't, men don't pull your socks up. My brother was different, you know, my brother was like the little softy and he got that sort of. But I was a laid back lad. I, weren't mis I didn't misbehave in school, I wasn't cheeky, I wasn't disrespectful. Um, but all that started to change where I became angry, disrespectful. Uh, or a man at school, um, and then I attacked someone in school. It was a bully, and I'd just lost my temper. And I'd been getting bullied for a few months. I was small, I was chubby. Uh, Difference is now I'm tall and chubby, but I was short. You know, <laughs> I was a little plump one, and I just I had all this anger, confusion, guilt. What did I do wrong? Why did he do that? Um, does that mean that I like boys? Do it, it, for a talk, I would just come into turn 13 when this happened. Uh, I met him when I was 12 and then before 13 that happened. Did did you speak to anyone or? Right, so, no, so I had all this and I'd, and I'd battered this bully and I'd this rage come out. And from that day I realized I weren't gonna get bullied, I had this rage, you know? And I got sent home, and 
I had to tell my dad because it was it was fuming at my behaviour and what's going on and so without going into too much after that because when I did this before it upset a few people. Um my family of criminals, apart from my dad, he was like the black sheep. I got taken, in fact, I'll just go into it. I got taken to my nan's, said what had happened, uh, and she hung a couple of my uncles. They come down, roll sight in the living room. I had to tell my story, I had to tell them what happened. I got sent out of the room. But I was just a different person then. I were interested in school, I just, violence whenever I could. I was smoking weed. Um, and then I got addicted to painkillers. Um, I was 15, I'd hurt my back. Uh, I got given a couple of cocodamol. And I real, fucking hell, the pain's gone, but the feeling, because I every day was this, could have been sunny, but in my head it was fucking cloudy, it was dark. I fucking didn't like life. Um, but these painkillers made me feel different, so I started taking more and more and more, and within, six to nine months i was going through 100 every four days uh of these 30 30 over 500 cocodamol which are the 30, strongest 35 30, 30, 30, 500 there were the 30 there were the, the, the 30s over the 500 the strongest and, and every four days i was going and buying a box of 100. Fucking, i've had them for me back mate two of them yeah two hours later you're a space cadet yeah i was 15 years old but by this time at 15 i was big you know, I was big for my age, but I was hammering them because I was still in back pain. I still wanted to play football. Um, and the feeling it just gave me in my head, it reduced the violence a bit, the anger, because it, it clouded, it just like, it like put something around me, a comfort. And when I drunk them and I'd watch them dissolve, 10 at a time, I'd watch them dissolve, and just, just this feeling I'd have in my stomach of, can't wait. And just tasting them felt like and it's weird and people might laugh but i was 15 and i've got all these emotions in my head this guilt confused am i straight am i gay what did i do i isolated myself from people my dad and brother would go away like weekends and school holidays my brother used to race motocross bikes so he was in a motocross group uh called phoenix 580 he had a big motor home and that's what they did and I'd stay at home, and weekends I'd, I wouldn't go out, school holidays I wouldn't go out. I fucking did not like to be around people. So I left school, I'm addicted to these painkillers. I left school, started working at my dad's place. He was a transport manager on the forklifts. And I ended up quitting that, it just went for me. Um, did you, fun how, how did you function? I've, t I've taken them. Confused, I'm a straight, I'm a gay. What did I do? I isolated myself from people. My dad and brother would go away like weekends and school holidays. My brother used to race motocross bikes. So he was in a motocross group uh, called Phoenix 580. He had a big motor home and that's what they did. And I'd stay at home and weekends I'd, I wouldn't go out. School holidays I wouldn't go out. I fucking did not like to be around people. So. I left school, I'm addicted to these painkillers. I left school, started working at my dad's place. He was a transport manager on the forklifts. And I ended up quitting that, it just went for me. Um, did you, how, how did you function? I've, ta I've taken them tablets. I am a space mm. cadet. I take them for maybe a day yeah. or two days a year when my bike's back. Right, bad. well, like any drug, Sam, the feeling that you forgive me at first when I used to take two, three, four, eventually you're getting used to that. To the point where when I was taking 10 a time, when I woke up in the morning, I had the same withdrawal symptoms, although I didn't know what they were then. I felt like I had the fucking flu. I had like the bumpy skin, I felt cold, my nose. Now I know it. It's opiate, isn't it? Because you go to the toilet, they bung me up. Don't, no, fucking hell, did it heck? No, it, yeah, it did bung me up. Uh, what I'd have to do is I'd wake up after like five, six days at a time, I'd wake up, whereas I were used to taking them straight away, seven o'clock, every morning, I were up seven o'clock drinking more, if I was going to work earlier than that, I'd take them. What I'd have to do is get up, 
wait three hours until I really started felt in like feeling the withdrawals and I could go the loo then. You know, it was hard, but it just so I leave school, I'm addicted to these and I start working at my dad's place, I leave there, I go to another place, knocking on fucking doors, trying to sell windows. And then I started doing security work and I loved it. During the week I'd be in different places, so Calderstones Mental Hospital. Oh yeah. On the gate there, searching and checking cars, um, then doing patrols. And then weekends I'd do clubs, nightclubs, and it was great because I could, as soon as I'd see someone fighting or as soon as I had that, I'd justify right now I can go, I'd see Nobed, and it'd be Nobed's face. So everywhere they did fucking get it. Um, so this particular night, I get ready for work, shower, get my uniform on, I go down to the shop and it was a Friday night so I had to do, I was going to do overtime at Calderstones. So it's a different uniform to your doors. So I go down, I come out of the shop and I bump into someone and I say, oh, have you seen so and so? Now I'd lent this lad, he'd come out with young offenders um, and I'd give him some like 80 quid. The shop had a flat above that was empty so I said to, the, to Taz who owned the shop, can he stay here for three or four days, I'll give you some money. Uh, said to the lad, right, when you get on your feet, you pay me back. And I hadn't seen him for months. So I said, oh, have you seen so-and-so? It was just a passing light. And he went, yeah, he's living at Nobeds. And my f fucking world collapsed. That's when my world went tits up. Um, because this person, I was never going to see him again, Sam. I was never going to see him. He'd been dealt with. In my head, I thought he'd disappeared. Um... And everything I'd been told. Did you did was you a pull lie. him out of your head? No, he was in there every yeah. fucking day. He was there. This is my family saying, you'll never see him again. He was in there every single day. I wouldn't sleep because I dream about it. Was he close where you lived? No, because this is the th oh, when I found out. No. Where you lived when it happened was no bed. Was it like miles away? Was it when was this at the time that he did to me? Yeah, or when I found yeah. out later? Both. So, yeah, bottom of my street, turn left, he lived a couple of doors up from the shop. So, we're bottom you of my street. Seeing him living. Yeah, I won't go out. I won't go out. Um, and I was just. It was my fault. Why, what, what did I do? Why did I, you know, what did I do to make him do all this? And. <sighs> so. So when this lad had said, oh, he's living at Nobeds, he was like, not only have I had all this going on in my head, I've been fucking betrayed. These people who were supposed to protect me. What these... did you think they'd done, Sean? I don't or know. Did... I never even questioned it. I just thought, they'd made him go away. Didn't know how, didn't know what. So they were no like thinking oh, I'd been, I just didn't know, I thought he'd gone. And it, like I say, when I was told we never speak about this, we never speak about it. You know, my dad's that person that once something's finished, you don't make, you don't show emotion. Um, so, doing this video last time on another channel, it's you know it's ruined a few relationships because some people don't like knowing that how they made me feel or you know. So anyway, everything it just like my stomach. My stomach dropped to the point where I really needed to go to the loo. The fear, the fear was like, it wasn't anger, it was fear. It was weird. And I walked home. Um, I went in the fridge, I got a can out, I opened the can, downed the can. And I thought, right, if these fuckers didn't do what they said they were going to do, I'm fucking 18 now. I'm 18, I'm six foot two. I'm 16 stone, I'm gonna fuck it, I'm gonna torture him. I'm gonna torture him. So, got a kitchen knife, jumped in the car, straight to his house, booted the front door open, run in, and as I run in the lift, like, you boot the front door as a vestibule door, I open that, and for people who, other parts of the country that don't know, vestibule is when you open doors like a little space, oh, and you open yeah. another door to the living room, where you put all your shoes and stuff. So, I opened that door 
and his three sons, there were three, he had four sons, but three of them are sat there now. My mate wasn't there, so the other three were the older than me. Uh, so when one jumped up, I just laid into him. One of them ran out the front door, the, another one run up the stairs. So I'm just, now I've got the knife sticking out my hand and I'm just, I'm just giving it to him. Um, you alright mate? Just, yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, I'm just oh, like. No. Um, Take a minute mate. Yeah, I've got the second one fucked up with the first one. <laughs> I don't mind. I've got the, so sure. so this is the second yeah because it's all like ah so I go to the house um I go in um I fight with one of his sons and I'm trying to drag the dad out the house um and as I'm trying to drag him out um obviously one of the other sons has gone I just it had fucked up. There were too many there were people on the street, it fucked up, so I jumped in the car and I drove off. Got arrested the next day. Um, I got charged, attempted kidnap, uh, aggravated burglary because I'd gone in, booted the front door through, so they charged me with Agberg. Even both, like, that Agberg was like, nothing was taken. So they did that, there were weapons, to put as much as they could onto me. 